Welcome. I'm Megan Thompson from ACS Valve. Today we're going to talk about how to get more from your rotary airlock valve. To do that, we need to understand more about how airlocks work so you can choose the right valve for your specific application. There is a constant challenge with pneumatic conveying systems and airlocks, and that is air leakage. When uh, you have to factor into your valve, you still have to deal with air leakage and, it, and the inefficiencies that go with it. Why? The term airlock is kind of a lie. Why? Because airlocks cannot have a perfect seal uh, as clearances between the rotor, the housing, and the rotor and end plates are needed for the valve to rotate. However, the air leakage can be minimized by doing a few things. Types of air leakage. I'll get into those few, few things in a minute. I'm just going to cover um, the types of air leakage. There's two styles of air leakage that affect your rotary valve. That's uh, clearance leakage. And the next one I'll get onto in a second is pocket leakage. For proper operation, rotor blades cannot come in contact with the housing. There must be a clearance between them. The clearances are very small, measured in a thousandth of an inch, but air can escape through them. Clearances are determined by counting with all the modes of operation, taking into consideration speed, temperature, which is the thermal expansion of the rotor and the housing, displacement of the housing under the material load, and rotor runout. Pocket leakage, when the material enters the rotor pockets, it displaces gas. And that gas leaks out the clearances, some of it, when exposed to pressure at the inlet. The remaining gas gets sealed in the rotor until it comes around to the inlet where it releases into the feed hopper above and restricts material flow. The total amount of rotor displacement leakage is determined by pressure differential across the valve, rotor pocket volume, product feed rate, and product shaft speed. Minimizing air leakage. As I said, airlocks is a kind of a, a, a not the greatest term for an airlock. However, leakage is unavoidable, unavoidable. But efforts can be made to minimize that gap or clearance within the rotor housing and end plates. Leakage calculation. The right manufacturer will factor in your details in the design phase and determine the right airlock style, rotor features, and rotor speed. This would be a valve matrix system. Rotor design. Factors in air leakage. Rotor clearance design. The most important thing I would say about uh, rotors for pneumatic conveying systems is the number of vanes the rotor has. Depending on the material you're conveying, in most cases in the industry, it's an eight vane rotor. When you're dealing with a pneumatic conveying system, I would recommend at least 10 to 12 vanes. Um, there's a theory that we call the more veins, the less air leakage, and it, it does the trick. Another option we take into consideration is um, the type of rotor. Is it open or closed? Uh, with uh, our experience over the years, uh, the more effective way to go uh, would be open-end. You get a really tight tolerance uh, across um, beside each end plate, and also the, the housing to rotor is the same as the clearance on the sidewalls, which is near the end plates. Closed-end rotors, um, they're great for abrasive materials and say, um, an ambient no pressure application. However, when it comes to pneumatic conveying, the closed end, what I refer to as the rotor shroud, once that rotor sh shroud starts to wear, air can seep up in between the rotor and the end plate and cause major air leakage to the point where new material can't be introduced and the valve needs to be taken out of service and uh, repaired or replaced. 